Uh, okay, yeah, maybe we can yeah. start by uh, with the discussion of papers that we thought were interesting from this past week. Um, uh, I guess so. It looks like there's something streaming. I'm not sure. Has the 80 person been in and doing something? I don't think. Yeah, I, I saw like some people. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This looks like it's streaming something. I don't know. Yeah. In fact, okay. if it's zooming. Oh, it looks like it is. It says recording. So okay. good. Yeah. Good. Um, maybe I can take it off by asking you string theory experts a question. So there was this paper that uh, claimed uh, perturbatively in bosonic string theory to prove the weak gravity conjecture. Has anyone mm -hmm. taken a look at this? Maybe not. I was curious. I, 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 saw, I saw the abstract. I think, okay, yeah. Same, okay. I'd be curious to hear if that, uh, yeah, what the, what the status of that is. Um, so, so what does it mean to prove it perturbatively? I mean, to, to just say that the corrections to the the corrections go in the way of, of making gravity weaker than some other force. I'm not sense. sure. Yeah, maybe you know, I can say more or someone else. I don't know what it means, but yeah. yeah. I'm not sure. Maybe it's a statement about the spectrum somehow. That would have been my guess, but it's blind speculation. Yeah. Yeah. We were. Uh, Edward, did you happen to take a look at this paper claiming to prove uh, perturbatively in bosonic string theory that we gravity conjecture? Uh, no, I didn't. Okay, okay. Neither did any of us. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. Any other papers people thought were interesting? There was a paper out of Stony Brook that was I thought was interesting. It was a, a variation on the Hayden Preskill thought experiment. Okay. They throw a diary in after the page time. And so usually you then say, okay, well, given the early time Hawking radiation and the late time Hawking radiation, I can reconstruct the diary. Mm -hmm. But uh, they, they said this time you throw the diary in and then someone uh, collapses the late time Hawking radiation wave function, like measures it. Oh, okay. Some way, projects it onto some state. And they said, if you wait a little longer, you can still reconstruct the diary from just the early time Hawking radiation. Uh, that's that's been collapsed. So the early time, no, the late time Hawking radiation, that that wave function was measured. The oh, I see. So, so there's the the first like fifty one percent that's already out. Yeah, and then uh, a few more want to come out, and you measure those. Yeah. Um, but I think the key, the, the interesting thing was that the early time Hawking radiation that come out that came out that you're measuring happened before you threw the diary in. Um. Wait, but you you still okay? Oh, but then you still have to get some. Hawking quanta after you put the diary in, right? Like they, they do that as well. You need you need the projection. The someone projects the late time Hawking quanta onto some state, but they measure it. Uh, good. But th this this is the late time Hawking quanta. Yeah, I got after I about diagram actually. But you have to have some quanta that came out after the diary went in. Uh, you need just the projection. It turns out if you have some, uh, you have a diary. A they usually entangle it with some. You know, external thing to check if you get the right answer. Huh. And here you have uh, this is a black hole. I'll call it black hole. And this is the early time Hawking radiation. You're at the uh, you're after the page time, so you assume this is like well mixed. Mm -hmm. You throw the diary into the black hole, so there goes some unitary, and out comes uh, the black hole remnant, which you still don't have access to. This is the late time Hawking radiation. Yeah. Okay. This diary just goes up. This goes up. And then what happens is that someone takes this and projects it onto some state. They, they measure it. Yeah, I get it. Uh -huh. Which naively you think would break the entanglement. But it turns out that you can apply a unitary to just uh, this and this to decode and get A out or something that is at least yeah. oh, identically okay. entangled with A bar. Yeah. Right. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think. That makes sense. Yeah, I think I'm not surprised by this. I, I was surprised by the fact that even though this is now measured, so you don't have any mixing here anymore. This is not a mixed state. Yeah, I think, but I think the measurement, we can understand the measurement won't put the information back in BH prime because BH prime is smaller than H early. It'll, yeah. It'll put it back in H early. Um, but, but sorry, I mean, when you measure it, you're not necessarily going to get zero, right? You might. They just say one. Whatever, say so you're, you're going to get some definite. State. State. Yeah, yeah. But I, I thought that was always part of the story. So that in that case, you have to measure twice as many. Like you can either, if you have the qubits, you, it's a factor of two difference. 
Yeah, it, it turns know? out that you need now the entropy to be twice. Yeah, that was part of the original story. I, I always said that you just needed access to both the late and the early Hawking radiation. Because you need a different decoder now than you did before. Well, it's a question of whether you need access to the late radiation quantum lane or classic. Ah, lane. yes, that makes and, sense. And there's a factor of two difference. But the, yeah. that was, I think that was in the original thing. So. Okay. Then, yeah, this is surprising to me then. <laughs> okay. Thanks. Related to what people have been talking about in the random circuit, literate circuit, they talked about how quantum information is robust against measurements. They talk about quantum error correction and these longer quantum It looks very similar. But you don't actually destroy the information with these local. Yeah, usually it's like the information just gets shifted around. You have to know what the outcome was because that'll determine like uh, the state of the rest. But yeah. So if you have if you have a big system and you have access to fifty one percent of it, then you can if you if you knew the original state, okay. you could find a sub sub system of this your system that was completely entangled with the system. Okay. But if you met, wasted two percent sort of by measuring it, or you, you must be certain that you can still do that. That's something. But anyway, how much of the fifty one percent can you measure? And so. Um, yeah. it, it must be that you can do this. You can measure two percent. I think, yeah, you saw forty nine percent, which will be entangled with the other forty nine percent, and the other measurement is not in there. Right. You think you to do too much stuff. Yeah, I think right because because measuring it. Uh, yeah, there is some concrete thing, which I think turns out to be some factor of two. I, measuring it, I think you could imagine it's not sort of wasting the two percent, but it's sort of shifting around where the quantum information is. Uh, and, and as you say, like the, the measurement outcome determines like in, in what way they're entangled. So affects the recovery. Well, but basically, the measuring version is like the teleportation. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, exactly. So you measure and then act with the unit. Good, yeah. All right, these are two recent papers. Any other papers caught people's eye these last this last week or last few weeks? Well, there's another paper by Englar and others on the Verisor the Verisor string, or whatever they call it. Yes, we were a very recent paper, which I'm afraid I can't summarize for you. Yeah. Good thing we have an expert here to, uh, <laughs> to explain it to us. Yeah. Yeah. We'll delay that one for, for a second. Good. Well, if everyone's very eager to hear about that one, we can uh, give ourselves some more time and uh, and begin that a little early. So, if if you're ready, yeah, yeah, yeah. sure. Thank you for presenting. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, sure. Okay, uh, so, so I want so uh, I'm Meng Yang, and uh, so today I want to uh, discuss uh, some recent paper I work with uh, Scott Collier and uh, Lawrence Eberhardt. It's uh, from a uh, last year paper we proposed uh, a TKFD approach to the 3D gravity, which uh, is basically just an improve, improvement of the previous uh, transcendence formulation. And, uh, and then in the recent paper, we do some. And then uh, also uh, started the properties of the theory more carefully. And uh, so actually, so I think people might, some people might, uh, some experts have already heard the most of the talks uh, by Lauren and uh, uh, Scott uh, last year about the first paper, but uh, maybe some people are still uh, kind of new to this subject. So I might start, still start from the basics and uh, see, because the, the time is a little bit limited, but uh, let's see like uh, how much I could uh, go to the second paper. So for the second paper, if I present, then I will basically focus on the section three of the chapter, uh, the second paper, because it's more related to the holographic uh, description of that. Although there are some interesting mathematical 
uh, implications from this theory that especially study some close 3D manifold, hyperbolic manifold, but uh, I might still think like the most of people's interest might be still the holographic theory. And uh, so let's uh, start. So here I list some kind of uh, approaches. Uh, so the 3D gravity is uh, uh, being proposed by Edward uh, in 1980. It's like the, there's a, a possible solver model. It might be a solver model in terms of the transcendent theory. And then there's a, a lot of efforts into that uh, direction. And uh, people are trying to compute the, uh, the gravitational path and the goals the, either in the, in the Einstein gravity language or in the first order form of them. And uh, but, uh, but uh, still, uh, this is this kind of a uh, uh, semi classical calculations are uh, sometimes they only work for some specific class of the 3D manifolds. Most of the time, people are working on, for example, the handle body calculations, and which might give you the 2D safety partition functions. And uh, some recently, people are looking at this two boundary one pole. So, they start from Conan Jensen's result about this uh, torus times the interval one pole. And, uh, Recently, there's the paper by Thomas Hartman, Jibben, and uh, Scott, and uh, Alex Maloney about uh, the, the some uh, uh, calculation about the mass and amount one point, which is uh, uh, a set of points. Uh, uh, also, there's a paper by Lawrence about talking about uh, some optional geometry partition function. Although we, we some classically compute this kind of partition function, but the result turns out to be still a little bit mysterious, especially, for example, like people talking about this hand body, uh, like the torus, uh, solid torus uh, partition functions, and the people were trying to extract the density of state of this uh, holographic CFT2 uh, theory, but uh, there's some some kind of uh, a mystery there, a mystery there. And then people also are interested in this kind of holographic description and uh, trying to uh, bootstrap some kind of uh, holographic CFT2. Uh, and there are a lot of uh, properties of this theory have already been explored and uh, we started in in the bootstrap way or or basically just look at the partition function of the, the gravity but uh, still uh, we, we currently still hope to find some concrete example of the holographic safety too but uh, currently still kind of a uh, also another mystery and then so in, in our paper start from this first paper paper uh, that's just a uh, uh, Kind of point out some kind of uh, uh, new things we, we are trying to add into this kind of uh, exploration. So uh, we're trying to start from, uh, so still, uh, our approach is more like a box approach. We, we didn't uh, directly look at the CFT2, but we are still looking at the gravity in the box and trying to do some gravitational pass integral. But we start from this kind of first order formulation, start from the transcendent theory. and. Uh, so that's a that's a discrete discrepancy between the transcendent theory and the, the gravity, which is like the although classically, if you just write down the action and the equation of motion, basically they are the same up to some future definition. Basically, you can rewrite the dream by field and spin connection into uh, into a, some SL two R transcendent uh, gauge field. But uh, uh, but quantumly, if you indeed trying to uh, at the quantum level, if you indeed trying to quantize the theory. Then they are different because, uh, uh, like the in Edwards' the 2007 paper, you know, already point out like the, if you look at just the the quantity the phase space, it's a different. The the simple example will be for a equals zero. It's a uh, basically a flat connection. Uh, it's a flat. It's flat, but uh, if you turn into the the metric uh, description, it's not quite invertible. So it's a uh, uh, it's a subtlety here. So, so that's why I think we should uh, treat this uh, transcendent theory and uh, the, the gravity theory differently. So in our paper, we're basically trying to propose the propose the more precise the uh, more precise the uh, correspondence between the gravity and uh, some T cap T theory, uh, T cap T. Is the what we call the although here yeah, I put uh, some kind of equal sign here, but it's actually a little bit still a little bit different uh, because uh, uh, what, what I mean here the the equal sign is basically like the, if you look at the phase space of the gravity and if you indeed try to 
uh, say like whether you can find some TPFT with the, the similar uh, the, the same face spacing so you could do the quantization then they are uh, they are great but there are some uh, some still some different uh, later I will discuss uh, for example when it compute a partition function for the TKFT you already fix the topology but for the gravity theory you need to sum over topology so there's still some different but here the ecosign is basically saying like the face space agree with each other So isn't there sometimes some global difference in the phase space, like related to large diffeomorphisms? Uh, I think there. Oh, you mean uh, yeah, yeah. So, so I think that later when yeah, this is how we 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 sum over the topology. So, so if you look at the TKP space, you have basically got some touch mirror space that the people argue like for the gravity, then you need to caution by the mapping class group of the surface. Yeah, yeah. So. So, so yeah, so here we, we start from a phase space, which is uh, basically just a two copy of the touch middle space or basic. Maybe, maybe we should oh. oh, the phase space before. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. But uh, I'll, I'll discuss later. Yeah, currently I'm still just uh, trying to uh, outline some, 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 some kind of uh, uh, advantages of our, uh, of our theory. So it's a, uh, so because uh, this so is a phase space, so, so you could uh, simply think like the, uh, 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 if you compute uh, the the partition function in the real theory to QFT quantumly, namely like the for finite C, it should still be trustworthy. So you don't really need to uh, do uh, a semi-classical large C calculation in some sense, but uh, for some fixed topology. So so still you need to sum over topology. So. And uh, so and also it's a kind of a computationally more approachable. So it's been, uh, what what I mean here is basically usually people study like either the transformation formulation or the, the gravity. You you usually need to solve the, the equation of motion, find the set point uh, metric or some uh, or solution to the gate field. But uh, for some more complicated uh, uh, manifold, for example, like a manifold with multiple boundaries, and uh, if you're trying to find a solution to uh, on that manifold, uh, uh, it's a, some sometimes uh, difficult. And uh, for here, if you try to work in this kind of TKFT thing, then uh, you could do some kind of surgery or techniques that uh, you're really using the TKFT to compute uh, some uh, some some uh, some partial functions on the manifold with multiple boundaries. And we will show later like the, just some examples. So it's uh, kind of uh, uh, easier and also. Uh, the computational approach is because there, there's the we call the Higa splitting for the 3D manifold. So for a closed manifold and open or the boundary or manifold with a boundary, you could uh, basically uh, uh, Higa split it into uh, like a handle body for the closed manifold and for the the uh, for the uh, uh, manifold with the boundaries. And if you can have Higa split into halves, and each half might be some kind of like a wormhole geometry. So. So, so then you could possibly, uh, you, you have some algorithm which could help you to compute the partition function. And also because of this computational approachable uh, uh, advantages and uh, because there will learn a lot of things from the 2D gravity, like the, the gravity, the pure gravity might actually capture some coarse grain uh, information from the holograph uh, perspective. And uh, so, because you you could in principle, especially when you compute the the partition function on the connecting manifold, and uh, because of this second point, then we could uh, compute this partition function on more uh, manifold with the uh, multiple boundaries of connecting geometries, and uh, in principle, we could capture more things about uh, some cross grain or kind of a, like the, the information about the ensemble of uh, holographic self two. So this is basically uh, some, uh, the, basically like the punchline of our, uh, our uh, result. And let's just uh, start. So start to uh, define the, the TKFD here. So basically we start from the, like uh, the uh, canonical quantization of the, the ADS3 gravity. So um, some suppose that we are basically just uh, so when we say canonical quantization, we choose uh, in the uh, so here we we choose the Lorentzian signature and uh, 
So you could think of this R is basically just time direction, and then the, the spatial size will be some uh, uh, Riemann surface. Uh, for demonstration, I basically just draw something like the, uh, like a genus two surface. So, and then in, uh, well, when you try to uh, do the quantization, either in the transformers formula uh, for or in the Einstein gravity formula, for in the transformers language, uh, you need to impose this flat, uh, flatness uh, condition. Basically, you're trying to find the, the connect, uh, flat connection on this Riemann surface, sigma. So then the space space of this uh, transformer theory will be basically trying to find the, the modular space of uh, all the flag, flag connection on this Riemann surface. So, so naively, you are looking at that. So, so you are looking at uh, a flag, flag, flag connection of the PSFQR on this uh, Riemann surface sigma. So this is the naive uh, modular space if you're just looking at the transcendence theory and uh, trying to do the quantization. But like I mentioned, like there, there are some part of the, the space space which is not uh, quite uh, uh, fit with the, the, the gravity uh, phase space. So interestingly, especially, I think the PRCL2I is very crucial here because there are four, uh, because the, you can connect. So this is basically a PRCL2I bundle over the sigma and the PSL2, if you remember, uh, if you are familiar with the, the hyperbolic geometry of a, a 2D Riemann surface, then you might be familiar with the, what we call the Fuchsian uh, uniformization or something like that. Because the PSL2i is uh, actually the isometric group of the H2, the, the hyperbolic uh, alpha half plane. So this crucial here is uh, because here the gauge group is uh, in the PSL2R, the global gauge group is the PSL2R. So you could possibly connect this PSL2R uh, bundles with the, some kind of H2 bundles. So then you could pull back so the H2, H2 have a, a hyperbolic, naturally have a hyperbolic metric on that. And if you pull back on the surface sigma, then you will get some kind of hyperbolic metric. So this is uh, how you could, uh, so this is how you could uh, connect this modular space of the, the flat PSO2 bundle uh, into a, a hyperbolic metric on the Riemann surface sigma uh, here. And uh, actually, if you look at this modular space, there are several components because uh, if you do the pullback, it's not always guaranteed like you will get uh, 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 like a non-degenerate metric on the sigma. Sometimes we'll get uh, some singular uh, some some degenerate uh, cycles through, and so you 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 find that this modular space actually have a several component and which will be classified by the Euler number on this sigma. This is basically like if you got some metric pullback from the H two and then you integral like uh, the say the uh, curvature and this is like a Gauss band eight. If you get actually the right Euler character, that means the the metric is non degenerate. And if you get something which is not exactly the, the Euler character of the, the sigma, then that means that it's, you know, it didn't actually got a non-degenerate metric. So that's why we actually single out uh, one component. So this modular space has several connected component, which is classified by the, uh, the, the integer number, which is actually, uh, so, so which is actually classified by some of the, the cohomology uh, h2 of the from the sigma to the integer and uh, so this is actually between uh, <clears throat> minus the uh, Euler character of the sigma minus the uh, all the way to Euler characteristics of the, the chi sigma uh, i'm not sure if uh, everyone can see this but uh, this is uh, basically you have uh, several connected component in this modular space and from this is classified by integer from the minus Euler characters to the Euler characters. So like I mentioned, this is basically like some gospel nade. So with, if we indeed want to find a non-degenerate uh, matrix, then we single out some uh, the component, which is this part, or either this part uh, up to some orientation reversal. So if you choose to impose the, some orientations and it's just select one component and uh, all the things in between, basically it will give you some, non, uh, some degenerate uh, metric. Basically, it's kind of like if you integral with some cycle, it got some zero size in, in that case. But for the torus, there's only one component. I mean, so. Oh, yeah. Uh, here, we, we almost just uh, look at the, the service which has a negative uh, 
occurrence is worse because you're looking for two commuting elements. And it could be both elliptic, both hyperbolic, or both wherever you have them. So there are several components. It won't fit his classification at all. Maybe I could take a moment to explain why they're multiple components. Yeah. So the group that's L2R is contractible onto U1. That means if you want the topology of an SL2R bundle, it's the same as if the structure group was U1. And the U1 bundle has a in two dimensions an invariant, the first round class that you're all familiar with. So the, however, if you start with the SL2 if you start with the SL2R bundle without stipulating it flat, you get an arbitrary integer. If you stipulate that it's flat, the integer takes values in the range that our speaker has explained. And as he said, the extreme ones are related to um, gravity or to gravity with opposite orientation, depending on the sign. The ones in between are related to metrics that would have zeros. Yeah, I have a question or comment. Uh, so, right, so the first phase of the 3D graph was actually two copies of the yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and what you're the, the quote unquote metric that you were just talking about is actually the metric that one would associate with one of the two copies. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. So, so this, you know, the answer to our connection here is not the, not the 3D metric, but it's the linear combination of the metric and the spin connection. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, yeah. So it seems all very reasonable what you're doing here, but it's not entirely obvious. That the invertibility of the 3D metric. You're uh, saying it's true. It's it, it, it equivalent to, to, to requiring irritability of these combinations. Uh, yeah. uh, it seems reasonable, but it's not obvious. Yeah, I, okay. yeah, I agree. Yeah, yeah. Well, a, a statement you could make without going into all the details of combining the two SL2s is that if you want to, an SL2, another connection between gravity and gauge theory is that. You can combine in two dimensions the spin connection and the fear plane into an SL2 connection. Right. And then the statements are true. If you, uh, constant cur negative curvature metric corresponds to a flat SL2R connection in one of the extreme classes he has there, where the sign depends on how you oriented a surface. Yeah. Yeah. It's not immediately obvious how that statement is related to the corresponding statement in three dimensions. In two two dimensions. Two dimensions. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, yeah, and uh, so since the way we're trying to think, uh, you know, like Karma mentioned, like there, so we actually uh, have uh, two copy of the PSF2R from the, the transcendent perspective, and uh, so we 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 single out the, this kind of component for uh, both of them, and uh, so each of the so this one basically, like I mentioned, which give you a hyperbolic metric on this surface. So we know like there, there's a, a modular space of the metric, a uh, hyperbolic metric on the remote surface, which is the, the attachment space. So this is basically the, the attachment space. And uh, because we have a two copy of the, the transcendence, and uh, so the phase space, uh, here the phase space is basically the, the attachment space, two copy of the attachment space. And uh, this result is not quite uh, uh, new, and the people also work out is the from uh, the, the Hamiltonian formulation of the the trans uh, from of, of the the gravity, which gave you actually uh, like a cotangent model of the uh, attachment space. So actually, this two the attachment space and the cotangent model of attachment space, the two copy of them, they actually uh, there's the uh, symplectic form uh, symplectic morphism between them. So this basically like the both of them are actually symplectic uh, manifold, and you have some. Some like morphism between them. So, so basically, you can do either do a quantization on the potential bundle of the attachment space or uh, on this kind of two copy, like a product of a two attachment space. And here, for convenience uh, result, uh, reason, we still choose this uh, to copy because you could also think this as the, so I, I should put a bar here. So, this is basically the left mover, and the, you could think this as a left mover and the right mover in some sense. Uh, in the transcendence perspective, it's basically you have the A and A bar, you have two transcendence. Uh, so what's the form we're putting on T times T bar? Uh, so using the symplectic form on T and the one on T bar and just adding them? Yeah, so it's a, but one patch Miller space will have a, like a Wilkinson form, which is a symplectic form, and uh, you, you have another copy, which is, yeah. So it, the, you, yeah. you quantize the both of them, except like uh, the, I mean, what you said was confusing, but it's a 
equivalent to G star of the type more space because in the in the second G star of the type more space, the type more the zero section is the Gaussian. So that, that's true. So when T times T bar, you take equal and opposite symplectic forms. So the diagonal is that diagonal corresponds to the zero section in the other picture. I might want to say a word about this also. I, I'm sorry for interrupting. Yeah, yeah. When you quantize T, uh, you would get all the homomorphic functions. Well, how would you quantize T? It doesn't have the obvious set of real P's and Q's, but it is a complex map. So you can quantize it taking all the homomorphic functions in T. Yeah. And when you quantize T bar, similarly, you would take all the anti homomorphic functions in T. Yeah. Yeah. But homomorphic ones in T bar, but those are anti homomorphic on T. So then when you quantize T times T bar, you'd have the tensor product of all order functions and the anti functions on T. What happens to you when you quantize T star of T? Well, here you do have a natural set of real P's and Q's, the Q's being the functions on the base T, and the P's being the cotangent directions in T star of T. Mm -hmm. So now when you quantize, you take all L2 functions on T. But morally speaking, I mean, there's a precise theorem that's more complicated. Okay. Yeah. But morally speaking, all functions on T is the tensor product of all morphic functions. Oh, I see. yeah. Yeah. That... You see, uh, roughly, uh, a function that's neither homomorphic nor anti homomorphic is a function of Z and Z bar. Yeah, yeah. And that is in the tensor product of functions of Z functions of Z. If you expand it in a power series, you'd have terms like Z to the N times Z bar to the N. Each term in the power series is in the tensor product. Oh, yeah, I see. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. Yeah, thank you for the, yeah, the, the explanation. Yeah. Yeah, and there. So it, somehow non elementary functions are measure zero or something like that. Somehow what? Well, I mean, no, they're not analytic. So when you plot on C star of type space, as you said, you get L2 functions that could include. Non analytic functions. Non real analytic functions. Non real analytic functions. Real analytic functions are dense in that Hilbert space. So when you when you take the tensor product of T tensor T bar to make a Hilbert space of the tensor product, you had to complete it. So, so you're saying the completion actually two completions are the same. I mean, I'm not telling you how to prove the theorem, but what the theorem should you do? Right. I don't know how to prove the theorem, of course I don't. But what the theorem says is that the two completions are a little surprising. Yeah. Uh, well, but you might find it less surprising when you realize that uh, the same classical theory of 3D gravity has a phase space that can be described in either of the two ways. But still, that shouldn't completely demystify the surprise to you because quantization is a bit ambiguous. So, why are the two procedures of quantization equivalent? Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, so start from this point, and then we just do the quantization of this T times the T bar thing. And uh, like I mentioned previously, like the people also claim like uh, you should actually caution about the mapping factor of the uh, of this uh, sigma and uh, of the, the, the surface. And uh, here you could either do the caution and then do the quantization, but it's uh, more complicated. And or you could basically first do the quantization on this uh, product space and then you impose this uh, quotient of the mapping pass group later, which is basically uh, something like the we, we do by sum over the topology, which is sum over the so-called larger different of them and in, on the boundary. So here we, we still firstly do the, the quantization on T and T bar. And like uh, Edward just mentioned, like the, so basically if you quantize this one, you basically just choose uh, the holomorphic section of the, some line bundles. We, we, we could do some geometric quantization and you just got some holomorphic, basically like uh, the holomorphic section of the, some holomorphic line bundles on the on this uh, attachment space. So naively, you may think like the one good candidate will be like the, like the, the the compound blocks because the compound block is some something like a which depend on the uh the the depend on the coordinates on the attachment of space so we could we then propose like uh, if you indeed a quantize this uh, uh attach, one copy of the, the attachment of space you basically get a holomorphic compound block and if you 
do the quantization on the another uh, copies and it will go to the anti-holomorphic uh, couple blocks. So basically, we, we, we just consider the pure space uh, associated with uh, the sigma for one copy of the attachment space will basically be the uh, the the very sort of compound block. And C is the coefficient of the Peterson form in this topic. Sorry. Oh. I mean, the formal blocks for what C? Oh, you mean the center charge C? Oh, yeah, yeah. So this is the basically related to. That's the symplectic form, right? It's C times the Bayes Peterson. Yeah, yeah. So C is the defined by if you look at the transcendence uh, coupling K and uh, C is related to K and uh, also related. So it's, it's uh, basically you, you put some C there, which will depend on the gravitational coupling, uh, the G Newton in, in a euro with like the, the Brown Hanox wrote down. So, 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 but in, in principle, we, we choose the choose this, the C <laughs> we, we can choose this C arbitrarily because they're basically. You could associate the, the gravity the coupling, but you could also, for the decapity perspective, you could just set the C to be some arbitrary number. But then in our case, we choose the, because we are talking about the very sort of component block, which is also related to the Liouville. And so you could actually parameterize this the, the C by the Liouville coupling B. So it's in this way. And in, in our paper, for some kind of a, uh, uh, unitary rhythm, like we choose the C to be greater than 25 and the B to be great, uh, to be real in our case. But in principle, you could choose any C in this range greater than 25, so you could get a, a B, which is a real number. And uh, so later we will have a lot of expression in terms of a Liouville language. So this B might be kind of a uh, uh, kind of a useful uh, parameter you, to write down. And also, we also introduced the the, the scaling dimension of the component weight of the, the operator, which also it could be written in the Liouville case uh, in terms of the Liouville momentum p. So, in principle, the center charge uh, could be put by hand uh, by just the set the C to be any number is greater than twenty five. And uh, so then this will basically be the uh, the virtual component block with the, this certain center charge C. It's supposed to be related to the transcendence level, you know. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's some function. Of classic, yeah, yeah, classically, you could relate it. For example, C equals like a six k or something like that. Mm -hmm. It's a, it's related to that. But I I actually say like that when you write up. So because I still want to just make this correspondence to the transcendence theory more classically. So that means like you could only trust this because we know uh, in the classical level. If you compute the one loop correction, then you also have some renormalization of the renormalization of the, the coupling, G Newton, something like that. So I should say this C, the reason I say it's put by hand is because it's a quantum theory, and but it could be classically associated with the, the coupling in C. Yeah. Uh, uh, I have a question. So um so you said earlier uh, that uh, when you quantize the theory on the hackmeter space, that corresponding to uh you have uh, uh, the sector with uh, with the Euler characteristics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. But for other cases with degenerate uh, metric, you you uh, you don't you don't deal with those, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah because oh. there, are, I think there, if you are indeed look at the PSI two transcendence theory, and uh, you basically also need to look at the other component. But here we we are interested in, in the gravity, so that's why we can look at that part. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, 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 the gravity only due to uh, corresponding to the yeah, yeah, the phase space, yeah, highest one. Okay. And there, uh, there's another subtlety because uh, I think the PSATR is a non-compact group, and I'm not very really sure if you uh, indeed the quantization for the transcendence theory, whether that's a, a, a good good inner product or something like that. You could take uh, if you do what if you uh, quant just do the quantization for the PSATR transcendence theory, uh, transcendence theory, whether there's a Good uh, in the product, uh, like you could take. Well, you basically ask whether the PSL to our transcendence theory exists. Yeah, yeah, that... I believe it exists and that there would be a good in the product. Okay, yeah. I'm not sure how well it's interested. Yeah, I see. Yeah, but uh, here we just look at this virtual uh, uh, component block and uh, we, we just look at uh, this uh, component. And so if you need to do a quantization, then the the, the the Hilbert space will be described by, will be spanned by the virtual the component block. And then, so given the Hilbert space, then you you want to basically 
uh, and then there's another motivation why you should think uh, this, this this conclusion is correct is because uh, you could also motivate from the ADSFT correspondence. And uh, if you need it, if you say like uh, if you do any kind of a ball calculation, which will be correspond to some boundary CFT answer, and uh, you should think that the bulk answer will basically be uh, some. So because this is the TQFT. If you do the bulk pass integral, you basically just prepare some states on the, in the Hubert space of associated with the boundary. So this will be some vectors in the Hubert space of uh, associated with some boundary. And in the ADSFT, you think like you could think this is also some part of the, the CFT partition function in some sense. And the CFT partition function can be expanded by the component block expansion. Based. So that's why you should uh, think that like, if you indeed have uh, some TQFT which are associated with some um, 3D gravity theory, and uh, if you do the path integral with some boundaries, then it should prepare state, and this state is a Hubert space, and it should be spanned by the compound block. But, but you should first tell us how do you quantize it with the boundary and so on, which sectors you keep and so on, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's yeah. A, it's a, just a yeah. kind of a motivation, like the, if you take this uh, philosophy and see the kind of a serious day, then yeah. Okay, then uh, one important thing to lay the uh, for for this uh, Gilbert space reconstruction is basically we, we want to uh, kind of define the the, the so-called inner product on this uh, Hubert space, and uh, it's already uh, have, uh, proposed in a Herman paper in uh, 1989. So if you indeed trying to take the inner product between two carbon block at one and at two, uh, here I just uh, do some abstract notation. I didn't need to write this uh, carbon block explicitly in terms of uh, all these kind of uh, uh, variables you should put here. But uh, in principle, you need to integrate the hash mu space. So we we could uh, motivate a little bit. Uh, uh, from the, the string calculation, because the string wash calculation is basically integral with the moderate space. And if you integral with the attachment space locally, it's uh, similar to the, the integral of the moderate space. And uh, in principle, if you want to define a, a nice uh, measure over the attachment space, because we don't want, uh, we want to gauge the while, uh, while scaling symmetry. So basically, we still need the basic ghost, which will give you the right measure on this attachment space integral. And uh, we have the that's one buffer and the two here, which have some some central charge C. So this is the the couple block, and uh, in, in order to cancel uh, the wild anomaly correctly, yeah. to make this integral kind of well defined, we have to put something here which will cancel the wild anomaly. So we have a central charge C here. So we want to put some some something which has a central charge which is twenty six minus C here, and uh, and a candidate for this is uh, basically the time like Liouville partition function. The reason here we put the time like Liouville partition function here is because we don't want to put some actual data into this theory. And uh, because here, the F1 and F2 is basically the well sort conform block is to, uh, in, in some sense, it's just a Liouville conform block, semi class. Uh, it's, uh, it's a Liouville conform block. And uh, the time like Liouville basically didn't put any new data in, into this uh, theory. So the time like Liouville is uh, closely connected to the, the Liouville theory. So uh, the, the data like the structure constant is also similar to the DOD, but maybe the inverse of it, if you want to define it uh, more rightly. But uh, because uh, you, you, in principle, if you just look at the 26 minus C thing, then you have a lot of things you could put here. To basically like a minimum model would also have the, uh, for example, for C greater than 25, then this side will be C smaller than one, and you have a bunch of uh, CFT things like you have the uh, essential charge smaller than one. But uh, here, the reason we choose uh, the time like Liouville is because we don't want to put any actual data and uh, actual information into this uh, part, uh, in the product. And it turns out that this proposal is, uh, is nice because. Uh, like I mentioned later, we could uh, verify like whether this is correct uh, in the product, and uh, so this is the the inner product proposed here. And I have uh, a question about this inner product. So um, yeah, this time like Louisville also contains conformal blocks and so on, right? Yeah, yeah that, that's true. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So the the so here for this uh, F one F two part, we only have the component block, but for the time like part. Uh, it's a, a partition function, so it's a you could expand in terms of the, the 
uh, time like the component block, but also you have the, the struct constant. So in principle, so so th that's how like you could uh, get some. So so if you need to compute the the inner product between the component block here and you will get some uh, DOZZ on the right hand side. The reason why you get them DOZZ is basically because the if you take the integral and you have the time like DOZZ and the, the uh, space like DOZZ, the component block they together will integral and you will get some kind of orthogonal conditions and the, the struct constant in the time like DOZZ part will come out and uh, so the result will be somehow depend on the DOZZ form uh, the DOZZ coefficient. Can you say about Let me understand if I understood your your answer. So. In yeah. the time like Louisville, what you are saying is that the time like Louisville is the full partition function that yeah, yeah. Ends and its modular invariant and so on. It's not it's not just uh, some conformal blocks of the time like Louisville. It's really the full partition function. Yeah, that's true. Okay. So yeah. So this is basically some time Liu uh you if you write this as a compound block expansion and you have a bunch of uh, three point uh, OP coefficient of the time like you will times a compound block. Yeah. But it should be true that at least in the intermediate channels because of the physical state conditions, basically. Uh, because this is a covariant theory. So so oh, yeah. Yeah. you must view this as a theory of gravity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, of 2D gravity, so so indeed. The, oh, you mean the yeah 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 yeah. That's one. So, so yeah. Yeah, that's one condition we should impose is basically the the dividing the, by the the delta and the one one uh, one minus delta here. So so you you should indeed think like this uh, more like the like if you have a string. Although it's not uh, like a, a string here, but uh, if you look at this as a string partition function. Then you have the operator here, and you have the operator in the time like you will, and uh, they combine together and should be should satisfy the physical state condition. So it's basically the sum together to be one. So there's some condition we impose here. But uh, it, 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 so the left hand side is uh, almost uh, the, the same as the right hand side. So it, it, if you put a struct constant here, then it's exactly just like a string. A Wash calculation instead, uh, but only differ by the, whether you integral over the modular space or integral over the attachment space. But uh, here we just uh, want to compute the component block the inner product between these two component blocks. So we didn't put any struct constant on this side, but we still put the struct constant here. So this is uh, and this is how this inner product finally will be will 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 have some uh, DOD formula show up in the in the in, in the result. But uh, yeah, so do these intervals converge? Yeah, so uh, I I think the, that that depend the uh, I think the that depend on like the I think there for any uh so the component block on the we call the hard volume maximum. Question itself actually. Yeah. Oh, this is C bigger than twenty five. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Okay, I mean, I mean, I was going to say take f one equals f two, and then some make a modular partition function, and it obviously is, mm -hmm. you know, the sum of those squares is obviously divergent because it would be mapping class group invariant. Yeah, but there, there are some uncertainty here. Yeah, there's some also some uncertainty here. For example, if you just look, if you like look at the, the four point block there on the uh, sphere, and uh, uh, you have some intermediate channel p here. And uh, I think that this uh, integral only converge uh, if the p is the the the, the dimension. Well, I see two problems. One is one is that you have yeah. you you're close to mapping class group invariants. Mm -hmm. and maybe by putting up one equals f two and something with a conformal some conformal blocks, we could get some mapping class group invariants. So that's one factor of infinity. Mm -hmm. And then the other factor of infinity is tachyons. Uh, if I put f one equals f two, I'll typically mm -hmm. like the it means I want to comment perhaps that at the basis of scopomorphism blocks labeled by continuous uh, labels. So the inner product the component blocks. So it's uh, something you should make uh, it's delta, packets of control. Blocks. Yeah, it's it's delta function, they are delta function uh, normalized. So taking the two equal ones and they sitting at the top of delta function. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but if you just uh, if you're just trying to compute, for example, the compound block, here, the four-point compound here, there's some z to some power here, 
which depends on the dimension of the the the, the dimension of this uh, uh, internal intermediate channel. And uh, if you look at that that factors, and you you should you find like the yeah have to have the delta p greater than c minus one over twenty four, which is basically like the, what we call the physical state of the Liouville here uh, on the normalizable state in the Liouville part, which is have the the p which is real. But uh, for the, the data p smaller than this one, then you have the p which is not real. So this is some requirement for for this uh, uh, interval to convert. Then you, you you should have the inter intermediate channel have the uh, physical state, uh, normalizable state. So so this is some requirement uh, we impose here. And uh, and and uh, here I just. Uh, here, here I just try to write down the, the result of the in the product in a more sh a short tough way. Like it's basically like if you have a genus G and uh, an anspuncture surface, and it, you you try to write the component block in some specific channel C. So here uh, you see because it's a basic channel, and then you have some intermediate momentum P one here. So like I mentioned here, the momentum should satisfy that. Uh, Normalizable condition. Uh, so, and uh, so it's uh, if you take this in the product, you find this is a bit thick. It's a lot. It's a uh, actually also orthogonal. So it, in momentum p, so you have a, a data function in three g minus three plus in intermediate. Uh, And then you have some coefficient here, which is the rho g n. So this rho g n c here, if you expand it, which is the given by a bunch of the rho not p, and which is the basically the product of the so the, this p here. Is the basic intermediate intermediate channel P uh, always have a factor with its real not. This is uh, like a polygroth. So it's basically like a force for two things, two things. And, uh, and you have a product of uh, C0. So it, basically, any this kind of Riemann surface could be decomposed. Do some pair pants uh, decomposition, and uh, for each uh, pant, you will have uh, three vert three vertices, and uh, so then you will gain gain some C zero. C zero is uh, like the uh, normalized Diodid formula. The reason we call this a normalized Diodid formula is because if you take one uh, 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 momentum here to be identity, uh, basic analytical continue to Minus i of q over two, something like this, and then you will find uh, if you take the something like pi, pi close to what do we call it? like the i over i q over two, basically like the to be identity, and if you compute this. will give you uh I think it's P my P oh, P P yeah. So this is basically if you take a three point function if you turn one of the, the uh, point for the operator to be identity and the basis can it give you a two point function which should definitely uh, like identify the the two momentum here uh, we we choose some special things so because in the Liouville case you have the reflection like you have p to the minus p here all the formula here we just uh, try to just uh, make make all the p to be gr uh, greater than zero so basically we just kind of a quotient the, the reflection so all the all the momentum here is greater than zero because the, the p to minus p will not change the the component weight so it's just uh, deferred by some reflection. Uh, uh, factor, but uh, here all the the reason we we write uh, 
pj minus pk here is because other p is uh, uh, is uh, greater than zero. Yeah. And uh, so this is the uh, inappropriate result. And uh, one one comment here is the, like the here. Then this is uh, all the quantization because we have the Hilbert space and we have the inner product. And then we we still want to do this kind of thing, the, the mapping class group the quotient. And the nice thing is uh, like the the, the virtual component block realized the uh, basic uh, projective uh, unitary representation of the mapping class group. Basically, we have the the fusion corner. You you have the braiding. All this, all this kind of thing could acting on the the component block. And the one nice thing about this inner product, especially this result, is that if you indeed take the, the fusion kernel formula seriously and you plug into the this inner product, you will find that this inner product preserved. It's a it's an invariant under the mapping class group uh, uh, action. So is that is that the requirement that fixes the inner product, or uh, what what are the yeah I, I, I think the requirements that fix that formula on the left. I think that it's first, it's definitely this is a requirement if you indeed want to, uh, because the, this is a, a, a representation of uh, some, some mapping class group and uh, the inner product you propose should actually kind of a respect the, the, this kind of a mapping class group symmetry. So if you act as a mapping class group element on, the, on this inner product, you should, you should get the, it's in, it is invariant under it. The mapping class group uh, action, but uh, if you ask me whether this is a unique inner product to do that thing, I'm, I'm not very sure about the extra, but uh, at least uh, this inner product that satisfy this requirement. So, so this is the only if you can do this kind of thing, you can define the TKFT consistently, uh, because the, for the TKFT, usually we just uh, basically define the Hilbert space and search with uh, any boundary surface, closed surface. And then we impose the uh, when we propose the inner product, we we also have this uh, uh, realize the mapping class group and uh, representation. And uh, so the inner product definitely, if you want to be consistent, then definitely should be invariant under the yeah. but that, that then uh, is combined with the choice of matrices by which the map, mapping group acts on the on blocks. Oh, you mean the, uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so the is. choice of fusion and, and, and braiding matrices is combined with. Uh, yeah. Yeah, but there, but given a, a, a set of the uh, component blocks, and uh, for example, if you indeed know what will be the, the expression for the S channel block and the T channel block, yeah, then yeah. that should be an explicit expression for the fusion kernel. There's, there shouldn't be no ambiguity. Yeah. So once you have already defined the Hilbert space uh, explicitly, then the representation of the of the the, the mapping class group is clear. Yeah. So, yeah, so, so this is the basically the the definition of the the uh, Like I say, I should be uh, and then in the so so here we have the definition, and then we do some calculation about uh, by using this one. So let me say whether I could uh, at least do some calculations by using this uh, SDKP. So one simple example will be one simple example will be the hand body, although it's uh, not quite uh, interesting, but. Uh, Maybe it's still interesting, but uh, I'm thinking like the people have already know the answer. But uh, the handle body, if you ended up trying to compute the handle body partition function um, uh, in this kind of uh, virus or TKFT language, then basically you have some kind of a, a solid uh, uh, handle body which has a boundary which is uh, uh, some remote surface. And uh, in principle, you have, for example, this genus two, and you have a bunch of uh, cycles here. And you see, you always have uh, some contractible cycle. And uh, so this, so definitely this will basically just prepare some states in the genus two block. And uh, in here, because you see there's a bunch of uh, contractible cycle, you could do, uh, uh, like uh, you, you could choose the channel to just uh, go through this kind of a non uh, contractible cycle. Which will basically give you uh, identity blocks, 
uh, identity. So here I, I write identity. So basically, you have all the identity, all the uh, contract cycle, which basically give you uh, identity uh, state. And then if you're trying to do the uh, choose the channel to go through this uh, contract cycle, this basically give you an identity block on this genus G service. For genus 2, you'll get a genus 2 identity block. For solid torus, basically give you just the identity character in the versatile uh, like uh, representations. So, so in this is the kind of simple, and then you have the one pole, which is uh, also some some thing people have already studied, especially the two boundary one poles. Sorry, can I ask a question about this handle body? So oh yes, I I um I are you giving us a state in the so you had the Hilbert space that you discussed so far, right? Yeah. Are, are you giving us a state or an inner product in this Hilbert space? I, I, I didn't understand what the right-hand side of your equation is there. Could, could you explain a little bit more? Oh, uh, yeah. So, 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 so th this is the, uh, this is, a, you, you could understand this as a state in the, the Hilbert style I mentioned, which is basically, a, so, uh, if, for example, if you, you, you you're trying to define, uh, uh, you're, you're trying to write down the conform block on some remand surface, then you definitely need to put in some data, like the, for example, like the, you could actually have some non-trivial momentum, intermediate momentum going. If you just talk about a generic uh, conform block on say genus G surface, then in principle you could have some intermediate momentum. You also have some uh, modular, uh, mod mod moduli of the this remain, uh, genus two remain surface, and uh, here, well, what I here I, I didn't really talk about any moduli here. And uh, in principle, if you want to specify the 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 moduli, so so you need to uh, this is so. Abstractly, you should understand. Uh, I should think this as a, just a, some state, and which only depend on the intermediate momentum here, because we have all the cycles, which is contractible. So that's why we have the identity. But uh, in principle, in the gravity calculation, you always also need to impose the, the moduli of the, on the boundary surface. And in that case, the, if you only do the pattern level, you will get, uh, uh, say, for example, like a solid torus, you will have some chi one of pole, depend on the power of the moduli. And for the genus two surface, you also need to put the genus two surface the model here. But uh, what I uh, here I, I didn't make the, this model explicitly, and uh, in the actual calculation, you you will have some modular dependence. So uh, in the calculation, we just uh, specify the intermediate channel uh, momentum. So this is. Uh, I, I, re I realized that there is something I didn't understand uh, before. So. The Hilbert space is just the conformal blocks of uh, one factor. It's not it's not uh, holomorphic and under, anti holomorphic conformal yeah. blocks. Just, only the holomorphic ones. Uh, yeah. If you just quantize the the Tetch Miller part, the one Tetch Miller part, you will just get the holomorphic part. Yeah. Right. But the whole theory had both the holomorphic. So so let, let me. What, what is the statement about the Hilbert space? Is it is it two two conformal blocks or? Oh yeah yeah uh, so, yeah yeah so. So here, so here, when I talk about the Hilbert space of just one copy of the conform block, I'm just talking about the, the quantization of one touch middle space. And in principle, the, for the full theory, you will have uh, another copy, and uh, which give you the anti-holomorphic part. So in principle, for the solid torus calculation or solid gen or genus uh, or hyperbolic calculation, you'll get the actually a uh, square of it, uh, or actually the holomorphic part multiplied by the anti-holomorphic part. And then, if you want to sum over the mapping class group, they they got kind of mixed. Kind of uh, mixed in some sense, yeah. Sorry. So, so for example, when you this here in in the in the blackboard uh, on the right, you you had a, an inner product, right? Yeah, yeah, that's true. That, that's not the full Hilbert. So, if I had the full Hilbert space inner product, it will have two separate integrals. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah this is just for one copy, one copy of the, the Hilbert okay. space. But the, the other have, copy, you have a second copy of VC Ghost and time like you will see. Or you could take the holomorphic times the anti holomorphic block and try and integrate them together. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's, what, what, that's what I thought you would do, but he, he's having only one. He's have, He would have a, a two integrals, right? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so the, the, here the bar, although it looks like the, you you take the anthropomorphic because this is a, the the brand cat. So in principle, yeah. you should do that. But uh, you should not think this as bar as already you take the 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 the, the, the other anthropomorphic part. In principle, you could have a, a, also another integral of the bar, and uh, you, you compute this. That it's a, it will be basically the same, right? There. So it's, wait, is it one integral or two integrals? If I if I think about t star on the type more space, I would have one integral of L two functions on type more space. I must say that I don't. Here, the conformal blocks are looking very far from L two normalizable or even plane wise normalizable. The, the statement that the two quantizations are equivalent means that integral integrating a single integral with L two functions. Is the same as two integrals with one functional morphic of the other anton. And this, it's that second description that's more useful here. Although you didn't quite, you, your formula, if, if your formula is trying to be an expression for the partition function of the boundary theory, then I imagine you want the, the boundary theory below the gravity in some sense. Yeah, I imagine you wanted to take the integral, the norm square of what you call FG of one. Oh yeah, 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 that's true. The, the result would be square. Yeah, yeah. Here, 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 here. I just, uh, just uh, do all the same thing, just one single copy. But uh, you should always remind, uh, uh, remind yourself that uh, we actually have to copy, and uh, so everything should be. You also have the anti holomorphic part, so so you, you should square it. So 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 here I just uh, because there what we uh, uh, yeah. The, the velocity of t, you could uh, think like the, actually we are talking about the velocity of t is square because therefore each single attachment of space you already could define the Hilbert space and in the product like everything here we, we just square it so you could think like the whether the velocity of t is the, just the one single copy of attachment of space and you quantize it or you, you take the, the, the square of it but then in the gravity sense actually you need to square it but uh, here we basically just uh, do any all this kind of demonstration in just the one single copy, but the, it's, it will not be a part to generalize. Yeah. Let, let me understand something. So the Miller space is a complex manifold, right? So yeah. here, the formula that you had here on the right-hand side, this is a kind of contour integral in complex. You're only integrating over the complex coordinates, not the anti, only over the whole, it's a, like a contour integral, right? The one you have on the right? No. And something I don't understand is this Liouville thing. I would have thought because it's the full physical partition function would depend both on uh, Tach Muller and the coordinates and the and the, it would not be a holomorphic function. Um, it's not. Yeah. If you want to get the partition function, you take the absolute value square of what he's written and integrate it. Yeah, and also if two is holomorphic and if one bar is that this formula makes sense. Is this formula that is written there? Does does it make sense, or should I always consider it multiplied by the anti-holomorphic? As uh, Oprah just said, F two is holomorphic. Let's say an F one bar is anti-holomorphic. You take the product and you do an ordinary integral over like more space. Uh, okay, sorry. That okay. That that's but but that, okay. So roughly speaking, you're doing Bargman quantization of T and Bargman quantization of T bar, and then just tensor product. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. Uh, so. and, and for other handle bodies, you get the same answer, or you need to do some modular transformation? I mean, or is it modular invariant? No, it is not a modular invariant. So for other handle bodies, if you get the, the modular transform yeah. this. Thing. This is, I think, well, the claim that's been given is that this gives the gravitational answer for a given handle body. And that certainly is not not an invariant. Yeah, so. This is the uh, this is the basically if you fix the uh, handle bodies the topology and you specify all this kind of a con you know what what cycle is contractible and you could write a, a conformal in this language and then you square it which will basically be a gravity calculation on this specific topology and in principle people talking about the sum over topology basically then you sum over the Latin classical graph the boundary surface so basically if you need to talk about the gravity answer. Then you should basically sum over the mapping class group gamma of this the Riemann surface sigma of the this well. So here you need to make the, the moduli uh, more explicit. Sorry. 
So it's uh, basically you have the, you need to specify the moduli and then you're acting the, the mapping task group element on this moduli in some of all the images. So in, in the solid parts case, it's basically whatever proposed by more than the maximum. Rate. So, but in principle, you could also compute other things. And uh, for the warm hole things, then it's basically you have the, here we still just look at uh, some on shell solutions instead of the, 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 the torus wormhole, because the, like I mentioned, it even defined this Hilbert space on the torus is the kind of uh, not very uh, well defined. It, the whole kind of discussion is similar, rely on the the surface the, 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 you have a uh, half body metric. But you could indeed discuss the torus with the puncture, but uh, if you just have a single torus, it's a very complicated. It's a really complicated. But there, if you just look at a wormhole with uh, the boundary, which is uh, a hot body remote surface, then you could uh, compute this thing. It looks uh, similar to uh, uh, an inner product because you have uh, two boundary and each boundary have uh, some state. But uh, you should think that this result will basically give you a tensor product state in the Hilbert state of the left side and the Hilbert state of the right side. And because uh, in the middle, it's a, a trivial topology and this will give you just an identity uh, so it's basically the identity mapping between this two Hilbert space. So this result uh, after the calculation will basically give you, if you look at uh, this uh, wormhole, explicitly this basically be if you integrate the, all the more intermediate momentum P in this kind of uh, carbon block, and then you could uh, so, so you remember this factor is actually come from this the uh, this norm with this inner this norm it's more like the norm. So it's define a measure with respect to this the intermediate momentum. So you are what always the, you by you integral over the BP and you will always associate with this measure, and this measure will depend on the row naught and the C naught here, and then it will basically be a tensor product state. And uh, so this is a tensor product state. Sometimes maybe people might be more, uh, 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 it might be more convenient to do, maybe make this might be bar because they have some kind of orientation different. So if you indeed finally, if you take the moduli seriously, you have the M1 here and the M2 here. Uh, if you're trying to put it into the final result, will be a dual condition function. And in terms of the P, and they have a moduli M1 and M2, but one of them you, you might intend to be bar. So it, it has different rate, like a, a different domain because M1 and M2 bar. It's a, so the other one should be. Actually, the bar or the the anaholomorphic program. So it's taking p to minus p, or it's going to stay. In? Uh, this m two is the it should be. I suppose that the m one m two, for example, like a tau both a tau one and tau two. Maybe you should take the tau one and the minus tau two or something like this to to because of the orientation. But uh, what I'm saying is like the, finally you have the, the new world with the, the intermediate momentum P and then you have the anti-holomorphic and the holomorphic variable, which depend on M1 and M2. And then the gravity will basically be the square of it. So this is also semi-classically, if you do the large C expansion, you will basically recover the result uh, the people calculating the semi-classical gravity. And, uh, but here it seems like our result is more like a, a finite C result. So yeah, and this is a one power thing. In, in, incidentally, if you another way to see that something is funny about just the torus wormhole, yeah, is that the gravity answer, like the Cutler Jensen computed answer, is not the square of something. Yeah, so it doesn't just look like holomorphic times anti-holomorphic for the T two wormhole. Mm -hmm. So the, so if something breaks down about that. There. Yeah, uh, we, we 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 we're actually trying to understand the, those calculation in our framework, but actually if you, we, 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 we can do a little bit uh, in that direction, because uh, here our discussion is still like a, a set of points, 
in our language, it seems like only set of uh, the on-shell geometry makes sense. But if you indeed try to approach it in that way, uh, although we get a lot of divergence, but you could still start from a, a torus with a puncture and then do that calculation and take that puncture to be almost like identity. We got some some divergent factor with some kind of a uh, combination like that, but the, our result is uh, different from their yeah. result. Yeah, so it's basically like if you didn't quotient by the mapping plus. Right? Yeah, yeah, but yeah, but uh, this result doesn't. Yeah, the better. Oh, yeah, but in principle, you mean the the mapping factor of the the boundary? We, we also need to sum over the dam twist. I think. No, no, I'm not talking about the dam twist. I, I I mean like if you. Look, if you compare it to say JT gravity computation mm -hmm. on the double trumpet, oh, oh, oh. it's like the SL2R BF theory computation yeah. on the cylinder. They have a similar discrepancy. It's, it's kind of like the oh, yeah. whether the measure is integral DB or B. Oh, DB or DH. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, the, our difference is basically in our language, we always write the DP in the group, but I think they're in. Current Jensen's result, the final, the, their result is written in, in terms of a DH in the component. So it's a the H is a quadratic in P. So the mesh the, the mesh of the, the integral is different. So it's a, this is a one one difference here. Yeah. And uh, so yeah, and how many times? Uh, I think I'm, I'm already Yeah, we're a little over time now. Can, uh, maybe if we go Five to ten more minutes. Uh, yeah, yeah, I can do like five or ten minutes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so from the wormhole things, and uh, I just trying to uh, say like the some some a little bit new things in the in the second paper. The, with the, so in the second, uh, so so. People trying to start to look at this the two boundary wormholes to understand the, the statistic of the of CFD or B coefficient. And but this is a more like a, the, the Gaussian contribution because you only have a, a square of it. You have two people also trying to look at some non Gaussian uh, because the, uh, if you indeed try to understand this, then, so if you are looking at the uh, A three puncture sphere wormholes and they compute it will get the C zero as well. And this the people propose it to be related to the OP coefficient squall uh, average of the OP uh, the, the variance of the OP coefficient. So this is uh, the 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 people trying to understand the statistics of the OP coefficient. And then uh, this wormhole will tell you the Gaussian and the uh, the Gaussian uh, Gaussian and contribution. So basically, people are trying to understand the, this kind of uh, second moment. And uh, if you do the contribution, you will get the C0, uh, PI, PJ, PK, C0, PI bar, PJ bar, PK bar. And then you have a uh, some chronic delta function here. And then, sorry, was this ensemble supposed to come from summing over topology? Uh, no, this is just a for Oh, this is some of people trying to say this is a. Average over some holographic holographic CFT two, but people so for, a, for for a fixed topology sense. you're trying to translate it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As an average over the CFT with some specific central charge C here. Yeah, and uh, also, but uh, you could have some different uh, match uh, like the pairing between the IJK and IM, and then you will gain some factor like the. So because uh, the OP coefficient of the CFT. Uh, is to uh, kind of have some phase ambiguity, uh, phase difference if you actually permute the, the different index. So, so actually have more terms here. For here, we just basically change the 
we see this swap the M and N, and then you'll gain some some vector here. But they have more permutations. In minus sign. Oh, the minus. Oh, sorry. It's a minus one to the power of some. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is because the, you have the e to the pi i p square or something, and then e to the minus pi. For the holomorphic and other holomorphic part, then you have a different. Uh, different. There's a different sign. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so this is the. I think it's basically you have some v delta. In the in the three three point function, you have okay. some. Okay. So, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I think it's. Yes. It's so in the purely holomorphic theory, the sign isn't a sign, right? Because the H is not an image of this. Yeah, it sounds yeah it's a phase. And actually, being a phase doesn't, it's kind of inconsistent, right? Because if I switch them twice, it doesn't come back to itself, right? Right. Uh, but, but if you put the holomorphic and the holomorphic together, then it's the spin, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. This is a, this L is a spin, yeah. Oh, sorry, it's an L. Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah this is a, okay. I should put like an S. Yeah, yeah, the S. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. And so then the permutations. And so this is a Gaussian because this is the Gaussian contribution. And then there's some some non-Gaussian contribution. There's one non-Gaussian contribution is basically if you start, you still look at the two boundary wormhole, but you start to do some different thing. So you still have the I here, but then you have the J. So if you're trying to do this kind of thing, and uh, then people, I think uh, this will give you something like C I J J C uh, I J K sum. So the reason I put a star here because there's the orientation of the two boundaries. It's uh, similar to here. You, you have M one, M two, which is that uh, it's different. So so definitely this is not a Gaussian because of the J and K are different. They in principle are different. And if you into the compute this. Uh, the, uh, the the way you can compute it is basically uh, you could replace this uh, three puncture sphere by just filling it, and then this will if you fill in this it will gain some uh, uh, c zero function, but uh, uh, but uh, if you do that and uh, this will gain some uh, c zero function, but uh, if you do fill in this sphere and this will basically be some some S3 and then you have in the middle, you have some Wilson, yeah, this kind of a diagram, like I, I, and then you have a J. A. And you see here, then you could uh, treat, uh, treat this as the inner product between two, one, one, one functional torus, the compound block in the product, but uh, you have the, the, they are, the A cycle and the B cycle are actually different because they're, mm -hmm. they're, they're breathing together. Mm -hmm. So you, this result will basically give you uh, in a product between two one functional torus, but uh, one in the A cycle. And then you have the S transformation, which uh, switch the, the A cycle and the B cycle. So if you need to do this kind of computation, this will be the result. It will be C0, PI, PJ, PJ, SJK, LA. So this SJKI is basically a once puncture torus that you specify the puncture, which is the width I, PI, and the JK will basically be, this is a modular S transformation, and the JK will be this two JK. And uh, so I, I write a square here because uh, you have the two copy of the series. And then we will now. So yeah, so this is the uh, computation, which give you some kind of a non-Gaussian correction. Yeah, so it's it's one term in an expansion. Yeah. So what's the leading order term? Is this the is this the leading order term to that? Uh, you mean the, the leading term of one of the it's just plugging it in and out. Yeah, yeah, it's a it's one term thing in this in this term. So it's a one. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, and uh, so this is the one example. And so this, I'm, trying to, I'm still trying to understand the logic here. So you're assuming that the um, holographic description is an ensemble, and you're using the compensation with fixed topology to learn about that ensemble. Is that the idea? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Just the basic logic I'm trying to understand. Yeah. It's, it, 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 it seems like the, 
because the, yeah, it's more like the like that you have some motivation from the two D gravity, and uh, then the, the the people calculate this kind of connected geometry to your, and the, it implies some kind of a cost screen on on some average of the, some some holographic safety uh, in 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 this two D one D case, and uh, we we are basically just trying to say like the so although it's a little. It's still a little hard to to actually argue this more rigorous statement. But the, in the in the one D case, and the, for example, like that, okay, we, we we know like how to do the averaging and the, this kind of things. But the two D CFT, it's uh, you might think like the, although you propose this is something like the it's the average over the CFT, but the, how you do the average and whether you could indeed do a matching between these two. And uh, this is uh, still a hard thing to do, but uh, our it's more like a conjecture. Like uh, in principle, we are just trying to compute a uh, gravity pass integral in this kind of specific geometry and trying to interpret this as something. And uh, the we we try to propose like that this might be you could understand this as uh, some cost grain uh, and some average of the CFT two, but uh, we, we don't really know how to do the some average in that on that side. I think. And then the sensor model that collaborated, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. formulated that looks like that the you know if you find it on integral over CFT data like CHJK and the weights, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the potential looks like it's just imposing this crossing equation. In other words, the oh, yeah, the, the limit of the tensor model potential of some parameters like the delta function of the crossing constraints. So in principle, if you sum everything you will have imposed the crossing constraints then probably in, in the limit you don't really get an ensemble sort of localizes but if you do the expansion in a different way then it looks term by term like 3d gravity it relates closely to the your t of t computation yeah. so it might be that somehow although it looks like order by order you get an ensemble the ensemble you're expanding is really delta function of the constraints as the measure, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. That, that's that's what it yeah. seems to be looking like. Yeah, it's so, But but to, to see that that delta function of the constraints, you have to resum the topological expansions. It's very subtle. At least that seems how it seems to look. Yeah. Yeah. And, okay. Let me just uh, talk about one last thing, and then I think we have time. we're done. So. So one one last thing is basically like the I think it's a kind of related to Daniel's comment. Like uh, we 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 do some kind of a four boundary one point calculation, and it's uh, basically give you some six J symbol, which is uh, related to the fusion kernel. So it's a uh, more like uh, you have imposed a crossing. It's uh, basically you want to make uh, it consistent. So the S channel component. Uh, 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 and the D channel component uh, block should should. They are, they are off by the, the fusion kernel. And so you should actually expect this will be consistent in terms of. So, so, so we suppose you compute a. a, a <clears throat> this kind of four one real house. And uh, so. So this kind of one part, and uh, in principle, you could uh, you, you could uh, compute it basically you can try to uh, decompose this thing into two parts. Each part will be uh, it's uh, similar to some couple of the decomposition. You have the one, two, three, four, and S. Uh, so the, so this is a fourth functor. Uh, a fourth, uh, a boundary with a fourth puncture and the two boundary with the third puncture. And there's another half which will basically be like a T channel decomposition. And uh, the, the similar trick you could put, put, put here is basically you can fill in the third puncture sphere and uh, this will basically uh, give you, and you gain some factor of the C0. But if you do this, this will exactly basically give you the 
for calling block on the sphere. And uh, then you take the inner product uh, as we propose here, the inner product formula you could use, and then you could uh, get the result. And the result will be basically for one single copy will be C0, P1, P2, P, S. You have a four C0 here, which is so, and uh, you have the uh, uh, a six ray symbol, which uh, is labeled by P1, P2, P, S, P3, P4, P, P. And uh, here you have a four C0, basically be one, two, S, one, uh, and uh, three, four, S, then uh, one, uh, one, four, T, and uh, three, two, T. So the whole expression has a uh, tetrahedral symmetry. This, upper, uh, this uh, arrangement, is, uh, this ordering is basically match the, the six ray symbol. And six ray symbol itself has a uh, tetrahedral symmetry. So this makes sense because I, I draw this in this way like a, a tetrahedral. So this expression that basically gives you uh, uh, sorry. Well, yeah. Maybe this is obvious, but you can each of the little balls you've cut out, yeah. you can fill it in, putting a three a vertex. If you think of lines as representing Wilson lines, yeah. each little ball represents a coupling of the three lines. You could have made a point coupling out of it. Yeah. Then you simply would have had a tetrahedral configuration of Wilson lines embedded on the three sphere. Yeah, yeah that's so true. The six J symbol is the explanation of that tetrahedral. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And that's spelled classically. Classically, it would just be the value of the tetrahedral. Quantum mechanically, it's the explanation. Yeah, that's true. Because the, if you indeed take this uh, six J symbol and the, take to the the seven six classical limit, you will got basically the the tetrahedral uh, volume of the tetrahedral. So, yeah, and this will basically be, uh, give you a four, four moment. And uh, there's one important thing I should point out is that, like, basically, it's uh, consistent with the crossing. Uh, the reason is because uh, if you indeed compute, uh, instead, if you are indeed consider a four, four point to one point. This should basically uh, try to give you a sense the how to average over the full point function. And uh, so, so, and if you ended up trying to uh, do a extension of this one, but uh, you're trying to uh, expand this in the S channel and uh, this side in the T channel. So then you will get something like the C12S, CS34, C41T star, CT23, C four six four one T star, C T two three star. And then you have uh, one couple block in the S channel and one in the T channel. And uh, they are different by the fusion matrix. So, uh, different by the fusion matrix. TF. If you indeed are trying to uh, take the inner product between these two compound blocks, and you basically just take, uh, you can use the, the F symbol to the fusion kernel to change it to be the same uh, channel and then take the inner product. So, if you indeed uh, plug this result into this part, which is the fourth moment, and if you indeed also have the this kind of a, a fusion kernel between these two, and the, if you indeed try to uh, evaluate this, this will basically give you the Liouville square. So this is matched with the the ghost the, the, the previous result. So th that's just saying like the if you compute this the non gaussian contribution, and this actually match with the 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 two or boundary wormhole results. If you're trying to decompose this, uh, the left hand side, right side in the different uh, channel, basically it's a crossing. So, so this is consistent with the crossing. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, this is the. Oh. Thank you very much.